Do you think all women think alike? A mentality? Um, definitely not. Yes. <laughs> In regards to men, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree. <laughs> that would be scary if they did. They'd be after one thing, one watch, one man, one everything. No, I think women think very differently. No, actually no. <laughs> Not all women think the same. Because I have my friends who say, you know, the husband is, you know, this protector. He is this guy, you know, who, who, who will always be there for you. But you've got other women who are just like the opposite. They're just like, no. Yeah. Because, of course, each woman have different mindset. They have jealousy. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What about the jealousy? I think jealousy is... That's what kills oh, her. Oh, by the way, check this. She did this. She did that. Why can't I do they this? They bought this. Why? They bought that. We haven't got this. Oh, that's too much. That is too much. I think, for me, but 80 to 70% they are the same mentality. I'll, I'll say because they also, I'll, I'll they also think, they no, all think no, the I'll same. I'll give them 50%. I think, okay, in relation to marriage, okay, yeah. I think they think very, very differently. I think it, do you know what I think it's the different experiences that people go through that make that, that where they make up their judgment on what they think of other people but I think the way we think is that yes we are more emotional but we have logic so do all women think alike no and thank no. god thank god yeah, thank god women don't think alike yeah it would be a very difficult society it's like saying are all women the same no they're not the same no no. Not all men are the same, not all women are the same, and that is why we succeed. Yes, because maybe they're insecure. Okay, I have a lot of friends mm. and I have a lot of family members who've been married. And from what I've seen, yes, they like the, to control their wives. Uh, and it can get toxic sometimes, it can get very toxic. But I've also seen those relationships where the man respects his wife so much that he gives her the freedom to do what she wants yeah. because he trusts her so much. And the woman respects that. She, the wife genuinely respects that. So they have this understanding. They have, you know, they compromise and they sacrifice. You can also say that women were brought up to not put forward their opinions and to expect the man to just take control to take control you know what i'm going to be very honest here come on let me I see that care, i don't care what other things and everything i'm going to be very honest in my opinion yeah there's a lot of men here are uneducated they control their wives that's one of inappropriate i think there's a difference between control and like protectiveness mm. like it's okay to be protective but when you're like telling what your wife should do that's a bit bad <laughs> It's changing now. I think it's changing now. Yeah, I think you see that with the younger generations where yeah. they're both the husband and wife are born brought up here. Uh, you know, but you know, it's funny because a, a lot of times it's going the opposite. Yeah, where the wife is. Where the wife is. Yeah, because the men, it's almost like they don't, they don't want to step up and take responsibility. No. It's called being henpecked. No, you know, when is a, it? When a woman. When a woman <laughs> dominates a man yes but that's when she wants to dominate but what about when a man is just not doing anything and you've got to get up and take control because you have to it's common amongst men though it is they, they do they do, they want to get involved that's what it is they want yeah. to get in themselves so involved into a woman's life do you think it's a cultural influence a religious influence cultural yeah i think definitely because our religion doesn't promote that no it's definitely cultural. The question is, do you think you will get along with your in-laws? <laughs> definitely my uncle. <laughs> my uncle. The outlaws? <laughs> A lot of people call them outlaws. I will. As in, I think I would definitely get along with my in-laws as long as I keep that level of respect mm. that level of you know how, how, trying to keep it keep our relationship formal because the second it turns informal it could either go two ways either you get way too close yeah. and too comfortable or it, it literally goes sideways and it gets so bad so why are you acting today you're Jenna you're all over I'll give you, you, I'll give you I'll give you a prime example of a person that we know you and I know 
Oh yeah. How is he? He's he's not he's not acting. But however, when he's there, he's he he's so adapting himself. about him for now. What about yourself? Then? I, I, for me, I'll give you a prime example of myself. So when I'm when I'm there, I'm adapting myself to the to the people around surrounding me. I think I will. I think, inshallah, um, I'm not being arrogant, um, but I think I've experienced enough in life to know a lot more about people, mm. and uh, I think I, I probably would approach them very differently. Mm. But however, yeah. I'm genuine. <clears throat> I love my auntie. You know me very well. You know me very well. How genuine I am. Yeah, sometimes, not all the time. Like, what about no. you? Well, myself. I love my auntie. She's my queen. But my uncle, oh my god, no. I, 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 no. I think I think it's all you respect yeah. them like how you respect your family. Definitely, I agree with that. Do you think you get along with them? Yeah, I do. But my uncle always in my case. I don't know why. <laughs> Hopefully, I hope so too. Hopefully, um, I don't know because I'm really comfortable with my family, and I feel like I'm not really accepting of other people that well as as well. Yeah, yeah. I find it difficult to get along with people, so. Sister, will you get along with your in-laws? I didn't get along with my in-laws, mm. my ex-in-laws. What was, care to elaborate? No, not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wise idea. <laughs> so I, I prefer to keep a formal relationship, as nice as they are. But my mum's always said to me, like, you know, when you get married, you have to think of your mother-in-law as being your, your mum. So if you ever have problems with your husband, don't come to me and tell me, go tell his mum. Yeah, oh, I, don't know I think it's good advice, but it's it depends on his mum. His mum can either, you know, back you or back him. Mm, I think you don't have to say for it. Yes. Yes, he should. I think once a month might be too little though. Once a fortnight, even if it's something really small, it's the thought. It's the thought that a rose every Friday. That's nice. That's that really nice. What well, if you can afford to buy a gift? So if I was, for example, I went outside, I said something really decent for her, I bought it. Does that mean that I have, I've saved up for it? No. You, 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 you buy her things on a daily basis. If you can afford it, why not buy it? But put it in, on, on the sentence where you have to save up to buy her some, some, yeah, something have every month. Up. I have to save up. I can't well, buy a gift well, straight away. You have to save up for well, it. Well, well, what, are you, what are you thinking of buying? What, buying a BMW car? I don't care what it is, but I have to save up for her. But his wife needs to feel appreciated. His wife, he, he, me, okay. We're not, his, this is my advice to all guys out there. Start small, don't start with an expensive gift, but otherwise she's gonna have the expectation of having an expensive gift all the time. Start small and go up. So then there's this, there's this thrill, there's the excitement, there's, you know, she, she can actually genuinely then, feel happy about it. But then she'll always expect something. Yeah, but why not? But what if you can't afford it? I think I'm not saying get her a Porsche. I'm yeah. getting. I'm saying you know get her a rose. Oh. You have to think of it of of, of in the sense. What uh, sense talking I, about? Okay, what let sense? Me, let actually? me give you a scenario. Go on, give me. Scenario. Your missus wanted the watch for one thousand two hundred pounds. Can you, you buy it buy straight, it straight away? away? No, that's what my question is. If you have to save, you said that I'm going to buy it. That's what you said earlier. I said what you can afford, you can buy it for her. If something so, imagine she won us then and there. Straight, what are you going to do then? You can't buy it straight away because you have responsibilities. You but have I saw, I need bills to, save to pay. Up. Sorry, it's hard time. No, yeah, I can't. but what I'm saying is, is you have to wait for the right moves. If your wife isn't as nice as you want her to be, she might become nice. She'll when become she very it. nice. Yeah, especially with. The new designer handbag. <laughs> like take her out or do something for her, but don't really buy her something. Well, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, is you buy something what you can afford and give it to her. It don't I'm have disagree. to be saving. No. Unless, no, no. unless you want to make her happy, that's a different scenario. Unless, no, but unless that she's want something which, which you can't afford, then you need to save. That's in my opinion. Well, I would say you should save up that. Maybe okay. she likes something more, more expensive. Well, I yeah. think we're clashing here again. All right, well. Get her, you something know, something small. small. Something just to show that, listen, I haven't forgotten you. Yeah. You, you know, you're still on my mind. I think it's the little things that make a difference. Like, yeah. if you show that you you care and stuff like that, that's what I would take more than yeah. a gift, maybe. Like, take her out or do something for her, but not really buy her something. Do you know what I mean? No, no, <laughs> no. He has to buy you something. <laughs> no, because it's like he's spending time with you. 
Yeah, but that and should like be done you. at least once every week anyway. Oh. I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. A daily gift could be a little nice note to your Yeah, mom. but now we're going too far. An hourly gift. <laughs> <laughs> Yes and no. It depends on actually if they have solid communication from the beginning. I would like to say no, mm. but with the increasing levels of div numbers of divorce, it would indicate that the they are. Is, yeah, they're not very healthy. I think a lot of people are marrying for the wrong reasons now. Right. And I think they're marrying it when they're probably the too immature or too mature even. It's sad to say, but yes. Unhealthy. But you'd have to define what a healthy marriage was. Yeah. And then compare and contrast it with an unhealthy marriage. We don't have enough time to do that here no. now. But unhealthy in terms of unhappy, I would say a lot of the marriages I know are, are unhappy. I personally, I personally think it's all, it's all about knowing each other. And Definitely arranging, arranging marriages sometimes doesn't work. What if you didn't click with that person? What if you're, you and that person didn't really match to each other? I think, I don't know why this, our generation, that something's gone wrong. <laughs> I agree there. <laughs> something's gone wrong in that, I don't know. I don't know what people are ma getting married for, people rushing into getting married and then they ending up with, in a bad situation. Yes, your family liked her. Yes, you did like her and everything. But when you start living under one umbrella, yeah, exactly. You you start knowing not, not knowing each other. Exactly. Like you're thinking, oh, you know, I made a mistake. She's miserable, yeah. So and also living in Islamic ways. I might sound really sort of religious here, but I think Islam gives us an amazing guide on how we should live. Um, and I and I, I honestly believe that that those rules or that contract the nikah it can it can be used in any country i think allah has designed it so well you should you should you should go into a person you don't know them or they don't know you it's not about you know about you know having cousins or anything like that you should know go to a person understand the person have a one-to-one -one with him see if your life gonna fit with him and then you make a decision whether Definitely you're, gonna get married you're right i believe you should meet the person spend time get engaged to that person Get to know them, spend time with them. Then you will know that you will find out the true color of that exactly. person. Would you forgive your wife or husband if they lied to you? Depending on the lie. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. Depends what sort of a lie is it. Oh, that's a tricky one. I would. Would you? Depends on what they've lied about. Yeah. As in, there's people say there's no white and black lies, but. White lies are those minor, you know, those minor lies where you can you can get over, you can understand why they'd lie, or you know, it could be to protect you or whatnot. But those black lies, those ones that you just you lie for no good reason, or you've actually lied to hurt me, then no, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't forgive. But then again, thinking about marriage, it's it to be honest, it genuinely depends on the lie. Yeah. If they've lied about taking out a loan in your name, then that's pretty but I'd severe. ask why though. I'd ask. But then if, if he's lied to you about that, what else has he lied about? I, I, uh, I would forgive her based on, 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 on what sort of a lie. So if, if a serious lie, yeah. or if she said to me, for example, uh, I'm going out with my friends, yeah. and then she went out to somewhere else, yeah. which I don't like her to go there, yeah. that's a serious lie. <clears throat> I would not forgive her. I wouldn't say I would, I would, well obviously it's my wife, because there's obviously- I that. would never forgive her. What? I would never forgive her. That would definitely cause your marriage to become a little bit, you know, not unstable, but yeah, it would cause problems. Because it's an honest communication, a part mm. of respect. But isn't giving a chance and forgiving... It, again, it depends. It depends. On the context yeah. of the lie. Like, if he's cheated on me, it's just going to be like, yo, listen, I'm never going to forgive you, bye. But if it's something like, you know, he's he, he it, it's a big lie, but it's not something that will actually ruin our relationship, what if he lied then we'd be like, fine. What if he lied about, like, work or something? That would just lead to arguments. I just think... It puts distrust. Of course. Give her a- Stop slamming the table. 
Well, I'm telling you because it's, it's a very serious question you've asked in here. So and why then, get emotional then, you, then? It's you. He's not the one to forgive. Yeah, because she's lying. I would forgive she her. She lied. What's the point? I would forgive her. And before I forgive her, oh, I would give oh. her the lecture. Obviously, and just tell her why has she, why have you done that? I would forgive. I would explain that how I felt and how I, I yeah. wouldn't want him to do it again. And I would say, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to move on. Yeah. Because I would want Allah to do that for me on the Day of Judgment. So yes. I would probably try to put my religion before me to help me to deal with it. Okay. And But it would mean that he would have to make serious, um, active efforts to show yeah. that he's not doing that again or lying exactly. again. Exactly.